Welcome back to your free training course for Windows 7 for the 7680 exam. This video and the rest of the course are always available on YouTube. In this video, I will look at NTFS permissions. NTFS permissions are applied to a file or folder in order to allow or deny access. There are five standard permissions for NTFS. First, you have list folder content. This is only applied at the folder level. If the user has this level of access, they can view the contents of a folder to see what files and folders are in that folder. This does not give them access to read or write anything in the folder, but does allow them to see what files are present. The next permission is read. This permission allows the user to read files, but not make changes to them. If the file is an executable, they will be able to read the file, but will not be able to run the file. The next permission, Write, allows you to write to a folder or file, but the user cannot delete the file or folder. The next permission, Modify, allows reading and writing to a file or folder, but also allows the user to delete the file or folder. This is the most commonly assigned permission on most networks to end users. The Modify permission allows the user to make changes to files and folders, but not to change the permissions of files or folders. If the end user were able to change the permissions of files or folders, they may lock themselves out or prevent other people who need access to the files or folders. The last permission is Full Control. This permission allows the user to read, write, and delete but also gives them the power to change permissions and change the owner of the file. Generally, full control is given to administrators only. Once you decide which permissions you want to give, you have a choice of allow or deny. Allow permissions are accumulative. If you belong to multiple groups, you get all the access that those groups allow. The deny permission, however, overrides all other permissions. If you were thinking about assigning the deny permission, it would be best for you to think again. In most cases, it is not necessary and can be avoided. To illustrate why, consider this. User John Doe is a member of Sales Group. He is given access to a folder called Invoices. Later on, it is decided that the Sales Department should not have access to the Invoices folder, so you deny the Sales Group access to the folder. Another user, Jane Doe, is in accounting. She sometimes needs to access files that the sales group has access to, so she is a member of the accounting group and the sales group. Once you change the permission to deny, she no longer has access to the invoice folder that is essential to do her job. As you can imagine, she is not amused. In this scenario, if you want to deny access to the sales group from the invoice folder, you would simply remove their access. This would prevent the sales group from accessing the folder, but would allow anyone in the accounting group to still access the folder. See that with careful planning, using the deny permission is not required. The deny permission does sometimes have its place but think twice before using it as they often cause problems later on. Once you understand which permissions are available and how to set allow and deny permissions, the next thing to understand is explicit and inherited permissions. Explicit permissions are permissions that are assigned directly to a file or folder. Inherited permissions are permissions that are assigned from the folder above. New files and folders added to this folder will automatically receive permissions from this folder. The advantage of inherited permissions is that you can control NTFS permissions for a complete folder hierarchy from a single point. To illustrate this, consider this hierarchy of folders. You can assign the read permission to a folder called public. All the folders below this will now inherit the read permission assigned to that folder. There is a folder in the hierarchy called Invoices that you only want the accounting department to have access to. 
you removed the inherited permissions from this folder and assigned it explicit permissions. The permissions are that the account department has modify access. It is later decided that a new department called audit is created, which needs access to everything. Notice how easy it is to add the audit group to public folder and all the other folder access changes automatically except for the folder that is explicitly assigned. If you want to allow the audit group access to the invoice directory, you will need to manually change it. Note, however, that just because a directory has explicit permissions does not mean that inheritance is disabled. Any folder created under the invoice folder can inherit the permissions from the one above it. Explicit permissions also work on the file level. If I, for example, allocated explicit permissions to a file or folder in the hierarchy, its permissions would no longer change if the permissions above it changed. Now, this brings up the next topic, copying and moving files. So, what happens if I move or copy a file from one location to another? If I move a file from the same volume to another location on the same volume, the permissions are kept. For example, if I move this file from here to here, it will keep its explicitly set permissions. This is the only time this happens. All other combinations will inherit the permissions of the folder where it is being copied to. For example, if I now copy this file to another part of the tree, it will inherit the permissions from the folder to where it is copied to. If I move or copy the file to another volume, it will inherit the permissions from that folder. Moving files on a local system can sometimes cause some unwanted side effects. For this reason, if you want to move a file on the same volume but want it to inherit the permissions of the new folder, I would copy the files to the new location and then delete the old files rather than moving. Doing this ensures the files do not keep their old permissions. Once you start copying, moving, and setting permissions, you may accidentally lock yourself out of a file, or maybe someone else locks themselves out of the file. Windows comes with a kind of back door when this occurs. Every file and folder on the system has an owner. The owner of the file has the ability to change permissions of any file or folder that they are the owner of. For example, if you only have read access and you are the owner, you can change the permissions of the file giving you access. If you remove all your access and have no permissions at all, if you are the owner, you can give yourself access. Even if you go so far as to deny yourself access to the file, you can give yourself access. But what happens if you are not the owner of the file and need access to a file? Windows has another backdoor which allows an administrator to change the owner of a file or folder. Once an administrator is the owner of a file, they can then assign permissions to that file. This is an important fact to remember because even an administrator cannot change the permission of a file or folder if they are not the owner of it and don't have permissions for it. I will now switch to my Windows 7 computer where we can have a better look at how NTFS permissions work. First of all, to demonstrate how inheritance works on a hard disk, I will start at the top and open the properties of the C drive. If I go to the Security tab, I can see all the permissions set on this drive. Any new folders created on this drive will inherit these permissions. Selecting the system user will show that the user has full control. Below this are the other permissions that I talked about earlier. Modify, read and execute, list folder contents, read and write. If I select administrators, the permissions are set the same. However, selecting users will show that the average user will be given read and execute, list folder contents, and read. This means, by default, administrators and the system user have full control over any folder created, while the users will only be able to read. To demonstrate this better, I will create a new folder on the C drive called NTFS Demo. Going into the properties of this folder and selecting the Security tab, 
shows that this folder has the same permissions as the root of the C drive. In this case, I want to give the user access to write to the folder, since at present they only have read access. To do this, press the edit button. Select users, and then select the permission you want to add. In this case, modify. Going back to the previous screen, the modify permission has been added. Notice that the permissions read and execute, list folder contents, and read have gray ticks. These permissions are still being inherited from the C drive. All I have done is added additional permissions to the list. Now that I have set the permissions for the folder, I will go into the folder and create a new file. Going into the properties for the file and selecting the security tab will show that the file has inherited the permissions from its parent folder, NTFS Demo. In some cases, you may want to change the NTFS permission completely. To do this, select the button Advanced. From here, select the option Change Permissions. To set only my permissions, I need to clear the tick box Include Inherited Permissions from this object's parent. Once I clear the tick box, I will be given a dialog asking what the initial permissions should be. The first option is Add. What this does is it copies the inherited permissions to the file. In this case, I will select the option Remove, which will remove all the permissions for the file. When I do this, I get a message telling me that no one will be able to access the file until I assign permissions to it. Once I proceed and remove the permissions and go back to Windows Explorer and try to open the file, I will get a message saying access is denied. Even though I am logged in as an administrator, I will not have access to the file. Since I am the owner of this file, I can still go back into the properties of the file and edit the NTFS security on the file. To demonstrate this fact more clearly, I'm going to deny everyone access to the file and ignore the error from Windows telling me this is a bad idea. If I select the Owner tab, you can see that the Trainer account, the Administrator account I am logged in as, is still the owner and thus can make changes to the permissions. Even though I have denied access to everyone, while I am the owner of this file, I still have this back door available to change the permissions if I need to. If I press Edit, I can now change the owner of the file. Once I select a new owner, and exit back to Windows Explorer, I have now completely locked myself out of the file for this user. This user is an administrator, so I can change ownership back to myself if I want to. In this case, there is only one file, but imagine if you had hundreds of files. You would not want to manually select each file and change it. To perform the actions on all files and folders under the parent folder, I will select the folder NTFS Demo and select the Properties. Once again, I will select the Security tab and then press the button Advanced. Just to prove a point, I'm going to attempt to change the permissions of the files under this directory. To do this, tick the option Replace All Child Object Permissions with inheritable permissions from this object. I will get a dialog asking if I want to replace all the permissions. This action will effectively reset all the permissions for all the files and folders under NTFS Demo. Once I press Yes, I will get an error message telling me that Windows was not able to change the security for the NTFS Demo document. This is because I changed the permission to deny for everyone. To get around this, I need to first change the owner of the file. To do this, select the Owner tab, press Edit, and then select the tick box at the bottom, Replace Owner on Subcontainers and Objects. Once I press OK, the owner of all the files and folders under this folder will be replaced. Now that I have changed the owner, I can go back to the Security tab and reset all the permissions in the NTFS folder. NTFS permissions may seem a bit complex at first, but with time you will get the hang of them.
Just remember that the owner of a file or folder can change the permissions to anything they want, regardless of what they are currently set to. Administrators can change the owner at any time. You can also see how being an administrator on a system gives you access to anything you want. This is how an offline attack works. By removing a hard disk from a system and putting it into another system, you can get access to any file or folder you want on that hard disk, regardless of what permissions are set. In the next video, I will look at some of the more advanced features of NTFS permissions. I will also look at how NTFS and share permissions work when combined together. Thanks for watching this completely free course on Windows 7. For more videos, please see our webpage or our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.